hope you've been enjoying this series as much as I have in the month of May, celebrating mothers and celebrating my pastor's friends as we continue on our series of the Women of the Bible. But today is my very own friend, Reverend Adrienne Danhauser. She's the interim priest in charge at the Episcopal Church of the Incarnation in Manhattan, where she has served for the past six years. Reverend Dan House's ministry is fueled by her commitment to evangelism and mission. She seeks to empower others to share God's love through faith-filled conversation in daily life and service to those in need. Reverend Dan House chairs the Episcopal Diocese of New York Task Force Against Human Trafficking and is especially committed to helping religious communities exercise their faith through anti-trafficking efforts. In 2017, she was selected as a New York nonprofit media 40 under 40 Rising Stars honoree for her work to combat child sex trafficking in hotels. Before entering ordained ministry, Reverend Dan Hauser practiced corporate bankruptcy law and financial restructuring at the Wall Street firm Fry Frank Harris Schreiber and Jacobson LLP. She holds a BA from Duke University, a JD from Vanderbilt University Law School, and an MDiv from Yale Divinity School. She's married to my friend as well, Jess Danhauser, CEO of Grand Window, a child welfare and family service agency. They have a young daughter who's especially the cutest thing ever, Callaway. So join me in my guest, Reverend Adrian Danhauser. Hello, 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 and welcome to BCF Women Ministry, Women of the Bible Series 2021. I am so excited to be in your home today, whether you're listening or whether you're watching. We're so glad to have you with us today. I'm equally excited and very excited about my very own friend being with us tonight, Reverend Adrienne Danhauser. She is the interim priest in charge of the Episcopal Church of the Incarnation in Manhattan. So welcome, 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 Reverend Adrian. So glad to have you with us. And we're going to go right into our um, woman character, none other than taking it way back in the very beginning to talk about Eve. And so I'm going to turn it over to Reverend Adrian to just break it down for us. And we're just going to engage in conversation as the spirit of God leads, Reverend Adrian. That sounds great. I'm so honored to be with you all tonight. Thank you, Reverend Q, for having me. Uh, I'll have to say, Eve, Eve, Eve's a tough one, right? <laughs> Temptation, forbidden fruit. Uh, what do we make of this woman, especially in her uh, disobedience? Um, I, I think the thing that sticks out most for me about uh, the, the story of Eve and uh, she says she was, was tricked by, by the serpent whom we can likely take to be, to be Satan. Uh, he was able to convince her to eat from the, the tree of knowledge um, because he said, if you do, you will be like God. Yeah. And God had originally told Adam that the, if you ate from the tree of knowledge, you would die. Uh, and obviously Eve got that, that information from Adam and, and repeated it to the serpent that, that God said we would die if we ate from this tree. Interestingly, the tree is not called the tree of death, but it's called the tree of knowledge. Uh, yeah. and, and the serpent says, no, you will not die. Uh, you will become like God. And isn't that the temptation that rings throughout the ages? I think it's a, just a very universal issue that, that affects each of us today. It even affected Jesus in the wilderness, right? When he mm -hmm. was tempted by, by Satan to mm -hmm. um, turn stones into bread, to jump off the temple so angels may rescue him, to bow down, down to Satan for all of the kingdoms of the world. And all those things, Satan was appealing to the very human side of Jesus to be um, relevant, spectacular, powerful. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that there, there's something in each of us that, that wants that, uh, just like Eve wanted that. And that, that is the desire to, to put ourselves above God, to think that we know better than God. 
and uh, to not uh, trust uh, yeah. God and, and trust the arrangement that we are in with God. And that mm -hmm. is a, a radical obedience. It's mm -hmm. not a popular word these days, um, but that really is at, at the heart of uh, the Christian life. Mm. You know, I'm reminded of that, that scripture that talks about the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, mm -hmm. um, uh, the lust of the flesh, you know, and how that sort of embodied that. But, I, you know, just thinking about her original purpose for even being created, mm -hmm. you know, when you think about her original intent, you know, the Bible says mm -hmm. that it was because he could not find a match for him among the animals, obviously. Right. And, um, so he said, you know, it's not good for man. To be, to be alone. Yeah. And so the original intent was to provide companionship mm -hmm. um, for the man. And I think it was that union that we sometimes get sidetracked with even in today's society of what is God's original intent mm. for men and for a wife, the man leaving and cleaving, right? Mm. Leaving mother and father and cleaving um, and for the purpose of a help meet, which isn't just simply, um, and some people would say being a slave or, you right. know, ungodly submission, but a help meet. And there's so many different verses that a tribute to that talks about our role as wife and role as husband. But when you go back into that garden, that how the subtlety of temptation lured her away from God's original intent. Yes. And just to speak to that intent and that that companionship and, and being a a helper and I would say even a, a partner. Uh, what, what was the design? And and when God uh, exiles them from the Garden of Eden and 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 punishes Adam and Eve, and He tells Eve that um, Adam will rule over her. Mm. And that right there, if that's a punishment, that means that's not how it was originally designed. That's mm. not what God had in mind. Um, and so I, th I think it's always helpful to, um, or even as, as uh, the Apostle Paul says, I think in 1 Corinthians, that he references the story in Genesis and that, that Eve was made from Adam's rib and that woman came from man. But then he says, but man comes through woman, right? Mm -hmm. That as, as the, um, in, in, in childbirth and, and lifts that up. Um, and then I, I will also have to say, you know, there are two creation stories in the Bible, and and the the in the first one, uh, God creates uh, humans, Adam and Eve at once, and and calls it very good. Yeah. So j just to to keep it in in context, but but yeah. what, but do we don't you love that that part about the the story? Um, when Eve is, is made and Adam says, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Mm. And, you know, I think that does speak to, um, you know, the, 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 the sanctity and the beauty of, of marriage and the, the supreme intimacy that, that we can have with, with, with someone um, merit, through marriage under God. Marriage under God. And, and so you know what, too, uh, Reverend Adrian, there's a, a blame game here, too. Mm. The, like, let's, let's dissect that a little bit. You know, yeah. people are saying if he didn't, then Adam wouldn't. Or if Adam had been in his place, then mm. he would not have. You want to you want to break up just some of your personal views on that? What are your... Well, I think, you know, the, the Bible is often... Um, descriptive of, of human behavior even more than it is about God's in, intention. But there there has to be a, a reason perhaps for the writers at the time to explain why women need to be subjugated to men. 
<laughs> and so that might, uh, the, the blame could have been put on her in that way. Uh, <laughs> at, at the same time, we, we have to honor the story for the story. Uh, re regardless, um, or in addition to the, the context in which it arose. Um, but I'm going to kick it back to you for a second, Reverend yeah, Keaton, to, no, to answer I, that question from another angle. What are you thinking about it? I'm thinking about, you know, I think about it, uh, the finger pointing. Let's just move to the finger pointing in general, you know, <laughs> you know, he, you know, he, you know, it was the wife you gave me. It's the wife you gave me God, <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you gave me. Okay. So let's not get it twisted. You know, if you're the one that made her, you're the one that appointed her to me. Mm. Um, and you're the one that, you know, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And this is the fruit of what you gave her. So he's already going straight to God with the blame. Right. So, and yes. even though he says he gave, uh, 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 gave it to me, but it's the wife you gave me. Um, and so, and then, and then the next blame comes from Eve hanging out. Well, you know, you really need to talk to the serpent because you created that the serpent as well. And so there's a lot going on God here. You created the serpent, you created me. It's just like one big mess of a family. Mm. And then I just want to move it. I want to move it, the, move it a little bit because a lot of times, even in our own relationships, that it is hard for us to put a mirror on and see ourselves and the role that we play mm. to get where we are today. So let's bring it here. Yes, um, let's go there. You know, it's where we feel justified mm -hmm. in creating the blame outside of ourselves. Um, and, and that's a dangerous ground, very dangerous ground. Um, there is, there is no unity in that. And there will never be unity in that. Unless, and that's why the Bible speaks of when we're in those types of situation where it's hard, where we're, we're, we're like between a rock and a hard space, you know, the, the hard place. The Bible talks about the purpose of having these discussions as husband and wives and as, a, as, as a, for the purpose of reconciliation. Right. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we don't discuss, we don't have discussions for the purpose of reconciliation. We have discussions for the purpose of winning, mm -hmm. which is quite different um, in God's intent. And so when I thought about this blame of the other, which is, and sometimes we can be right in the blame, right? It's not like we're wrong in the blame, but how do we reach that point of reconciliation, if we can bring it modern day, how can we reach that point of reconciliation knowing that perhaps they did what they, what you said they did. They said what you, you, they got you in the situation that you're in, but how do you reconcile for these, in these matters? How do we see ourselves? I think sometimes we just have to ask ourselves that. Um, I find the most effective means of communication, as I've always said, my members hear me, is, is an ability to listen. And sometimes when in our effort to, to prove ourselves right, we lose out on what could be an amazing reconciliation where the two, where God intended the two to be one, where that really could uh, be solidified. Um, and where we really could grow closer. I've seen it in my own self and, I, and I'm gonna turn it over to you, but I, I've seen it in my own marriage, you know, where there were times when I used to just have the discussion or disagreement for the purpose of winning. So it was more about, I need you to finish your statement because I'm about to come in with what I'm already thinking about. I'm not really listening to you because I've already got I already know that the end game is Q will win. Um, and so that doesn't bring us together. It, it tears you apart. And, um, and sometimes just because they end up silent doesn't mean you won. Right. And you know, sometimes that silence says, I don't wanna go down this road. This thing is wearing me down, wearing me out. 
And while you feel that you did that little conquering bit and you run walking around with your head up, you've literally created a schism in your relationship. When I begin to do the opposite of that, I cannot tell you what has happened through our relationship over the years. Next year, February, we're in number 40. We're celebrating 40. Okay, so you gotta come to my celebration. But yeah, so it's, but it's, it was a journey. And, but I really believe, uh, Reverend Adrian, that there is a point where you do really cross over and you understand the other, and then you become more sensitive to their feelings, their thoughts, yeah. recognizing that while you're on subject number two, they're still trying to process subject number one. They, I'm already like, I'm three different topics going on at the same time. And they are like, <laughs> you know, what the heck? <laughs> you know what's going on? So, but there is a place that I feel you can get to. And it is a true meeting of submitting one to another, you know, and not accentuating weaknesses, but bringing out strengths. Yeah. And when you do that, that union becomes even more whole. I, I, I pass it on to you. There, there are so, so many good little nuggets of wisdom in there, Rev Q. I, I really uh, appreciated hearing all your thoughts and, you know, the, the word accountability uh, certainly <laughs> came up and reconciliation. And, you know, the, I think I could sum it up in saying that Christianity is not about being right. It's about being love. Mm. And whenever we hold up being right over being love, it, <laughs> that relationship yeah. will suffer. Um, yeah. Yes. And then I was also reminded when it, when it comes to reconciliation, um, you know, that takes two things. It takes uh, forgiveness and accountability. If there is no accountability, you can still forgive, but you might not re repair and reconcile that relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and something else when, when, you were, when you were talking about that, um, you know, wanting to, to, to be in it and, and be right. And uh, the best thing is to actually to listen, to, to understand. I, I also thought, of, thought about apologizing. Mm. And um, <laughs> kind of the, the, the three sort of keys to a, a successful and, or, or an appropriate apology. Uh, one is to be be specific about what you did, not uh, I'm sorry if, you know, I hurt you, but to, but to say, you know, I, I didn't go to your kid's wedding, I didn't do this or that, and to own it, and to, to name the, the hurt that it caused, uh, yeah. and, you know, I understand that, that that really hurt you, and here is my explanation, but it's not my excuse, and uh, then to show deep remorse. Um, yeah. you know, it's all, it's all tied up in, in, uh, growing close to someone and being able to point at the, the, the log in your own eye, as opposed to the, the speck in the other person's. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, to bring it back to that, to marriage and, and Adam and Eve, um, and also Jesus that we are to, uh, love our, our spouse as Christ loved the church. Mm. And uh, when we think of that, that there is no closer human relationship than two people in that, in that romantic relationship and, and two becoming one, um, that is how, how Jesus loves us so, so openly um, embracing our vulnerabilities and, and knowing that we're in a, a safe place place with the other person and that you can trust and you can really just share and and be vulnerable in order to to be strong that's good that's good and and you and you know when you was talking about the moat um you know in the eye and it's almost as if that's sort of what was happening right then and there you know and um mm -hmm. you know it was happening right then and there it was like I wonder what would have happened if one of them just took responsibility. What yeah. if, what if, you know, and um, perhaps the same consequence, you know, um, 
you know, uh, and then we see as we move on in the story, you know, we, we find Eve, you know, bearing um, children and, and there was a price that was paid there as well. But I want to go back to the relationship and um, the, the power of repentance. And because I think we need to be, we need to show that example even more with our children. Yeah. I don't, um, because I know that if you ra raise in a house where no one ever apologized, you, you, the wife never apologized, the husband never apologized, and, and all they heard and all we heard was screaming back and forth, no one taking responsibility, then you walk into your home and you end up acting just like your mom, just like your daddy, and you're like, what is going on? There's things that I didn't like, but you didn't, you never saw that moment of repentance and uh, apologizing. Uh, it wasn't an example for your children. So they didn't see what was wrong and what was right. What, so you, you create shades of gray um, in your walk, your Christian walk, it becomes shades of gray for them. So you have to make sure that you're clear in your messaging. So I remember one time with Sarah, you know, I got really upset. It was like we were in our, I think she was maybe, she, she was in our, it was like fifth, sixth year of marriage or something. I don't remember, that's how long it's been. But um, she, I remember saying something and it was not right. And it was right then and there, the Holy Spirit convicted me. And I looked at Sarah, I said, what I just did wasn't right. It wasn't right as a wife. Um, I shouldn't have said that and I shouldn't have said it in that tone. Um, and so I need you to forgive me. So just as I've asked my husband at that moment for forgiveness publicly, because it was a public display of something that was not godly, I had to do it there because why? We're the, we're, we're the God they're seeing. They're not, they're, he's, he's not coming out from heaven and just like, hey, we're the God they're seeing. We're the Jesus they're seeing. We're the little Christ they're seeing. And so if we're, we're creating this muddy picture for them, it's gonna remain muddy throughout their adulthood. And so it's important that, you know, no, we're not gonna get it right, but the power of repentance and, of, and apologizing, it's like, it is so powerful. And forgiveness, because what forgiveness does, it releases them from judgment. Mm -hmm. True forgiveness, true forgiveness, it means that you're not gonna keep revisiting that same sin over and over right. and over again. That is the power of forgiveness. That's when you know you have truly forgiven because it's not a broken record any longer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not going over and over and over. You have literally released it. Mm. And so I've had to learn that in my years of marriage, in my years as a mother, as a woman. I wonder where forgiveness lied for Eve, mm -hmm. but Cain mm -hmm. and Abel. Yeah. I s they don't really go into that in the scripture, but I can only imagine what she went through. Maybe they didn't think it was an important um, story to highlight about her feelings. Right. You know, it was more important to talk about the jealousy and the envy between two brothers, et cetera. But for me in, in, in life and as a, with your spouse and your home, and just as you alluded to, uh, spoken of earlier, there has to be opportunities to apologize, repent, show the example to your children, work toward reconciliation. Don't hang out with the moat because we all have our shortcomings. Don't be afraid of the mirror because I used to break the mirror every time I saw it until I realized that I am not gonna be who God has called me to be until I took responsibility for myself. Mm -hmm. And these are lessons that we must embrace if we're going to be who God has called us to be, if we're going to be that wife, we're gonna be that husband, or be that spouse, you know, um, in, the, in the relationship and the mother and the father, you know, this is all about reconciliation. Yes. And, you know, and, and we have to learn Learn, learn. So we will stop going around the same mountain, Reverend Adrian, mm -hmm. over and over again because we refuse to learn the lesson. Right. And 
Um, and I think I want we want our audience to hear that from us. We want to, we want the, that to marinate in them because it's important if you're going to be healed internally and whole, don't be afraid um, to see yourself because it's through seeing yourself that you can become a better person um, and a better partner and a better um, spouse, better mother, mm-hmm. better, you know, uh, and, and you feel better. I mean, like when I, and, and you can't, and I want to make one more point before pulling it over, turning it over to you. You can't, you can't apologize so that they can apologize next. Right. You're, there is a no string attached to forgiveness. I'm going to forgive you, so, but I need you to tell me how you were wrong too. No, that's not for, that's not how it works. Yeah. Not true forgiveness. Sometimes we want that, and sometimes we get that, but sometimes we don't, and we got to let that go and let it stay. Mm-hmm. As long as you're taking responsibility, that's what matters. So, in this. Final moments, I want you to speak to all that we've been speaking to in these final like two to three minutes. Just just bring it on home, wrap it on up for us, Reverend Adrian, yeah. and then say a prayer for all those that are listening and watching this evening. I sure will. And you know, when you were talking about the power of forgiveness, I was all also reminded of the, the power of repentance. Uh, and which, you know, seemed to be a little what's missing in, in this story from, from Adam and Eve. And I know you kind of speculated what could have happened if, if, they, if they had come with repentant hearts to God. Yes. Because, you know, to, to name the sin gives us power over it. The things we can't name are the things that run us. And to say, you know, I'm, that's, that's not me. And I have power over that impatience, yes. that self-righteousness, that need to put somebody down in order to build myself up. I don't want that. And I am a new creation in Christ Jesus who liberates me from that and uh, gives me freedom in Christ. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, something else I was reminded of, you know, in, in talking about how it's important to model uh, repentance for our children to ask them for forgiveness when, yeah. when we need to and to show them how to ask God for forgiveness. Uh, something that uh, also works with with kids is a is a make it right consequence, right? So, so the consequence to the behavior, maybe you go do something nice for the person uh, you you hurt or uh, d- do something together right that that both family members would enjoy uh whatever it is and i think that's just kind of at top of mind what what can we what can we do to make it right to aid in that reconciliation and even though god's forgiveness is on offer and jesus has reconciled to us to himself through the cross it's also helpful to think okay what can i do good for god what what can i do that would be pleasing in god's sight Yes. Uh, not necessarily making it up to God, but just just owning the the um, that that need for accountability. Yes, and, and, and then going forward with that uh, commitment and a rededication to being in right relationship and being obedient uh, to Jesus. Wow, God has spoken tonight. This is so powerful. I just want to say thank you, Reverend Adrian, for for being with us tonight and for your rich deposits and this rich exchange of conversation. And um, I hope you were blessed because I know for a fact I've been blessed just regurgitating and hearing and exchanging and our minds and our wheels turning and our souls being fed. So thank you for joining us tonight. And remember we're doing this every Tuesday night at 7.30. So we would love to see you next Tuesday as we continue the Women of the Bible series, 2021. Good night. Good night.